Anyway, <coughs> um, so thanks for coming. I'm, my name is Tim Saunders. I'm the development director at the Cogworks, and I'm going to talk to you today about webhooks. Um, just a bit of a quick straw poll. Who here has heard of webhooks? Okay, a few of you. Uh, of those people who have heard of them, have any of you used them? One, one person. <laughs> oh no, two, there we go. Oh no, I have the three. Three hands. Okay. Okay, so uh, I'll talk a little bit about what webhooks are first. Um, and uh, yeah, and we'll see what we get. And I've got a little demo of webhooks implemented into Umbraco, which um, at some point after the event I'll release as a package. Um, but I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. So effectively, um, what are webhooks? Look, you see, they're, they're a proper technology. They've got a logo and everything. Um, <laughs> but web, webhooks are effectively eventing for the web. So you can call, um, say you raise an event in Umbraco, um, uh, that event would be pushed um, via HTTP to another system. Um, so what that means is that you can push data, um, you can do simple pings, you can do all sorts of things with them. Um, and they're really kind of easy to implement. And uh, in the great tradition of uh, technical talks, I've produced a diagram, which is uh, would possibly, possibly not terribly meaningful, so I'll try and explain it. <laughs> um, basically, what we have is your application here, your web application. It could be a website, uh, an Umbraco instance, whatever. Um, and that's normally made up of you have API and, and events. Um, you might have some web services that um, allow people to push data in or grab data out. Um, you might have some feeds, RSS, that sort of thing. Um, now, effectively, uh, these two little things down here, these are um, your webhooks. I've put them down kind of near the events because what they represent is um, the ability to... I'm not... <laughs> started. What they, what they represent is the ability to raise an event in your application uh, and then for an application to subscribe to that event, um, which is a simple kind of URL, and when they've subscribed to that event, when that uh, event is released, um, HTTP post goes over to them and they can do something with that data or that information that's come across to them. Um, now what they could also do is have webhooks themselves. So you can chain them together and create whole pipes of functionality with webhooks acting as a communication between each, um, each, each application that you've got. So um, your Umbraco publishes a bit of content, uh, pushes it via a webhook to the subscribing application, uh, and then that subscribing application does something with that um, information and can uh, push it off to other applications, other services, until you've got a whole chain of functionality. I mean, an example might be something like Twitter. Now, I don't think Twitter implements webhooks or allows um, you to, 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 to get to it in that way, but it would be a fantastic um, uh, way of, of getting tweets out and that sort of thing. So when something happens, send an email, send a tweet, do what you like. And there's tons of services on the web that allow you to write little sort of micro scripts uh, which you can um, uh, subscribe to webhooks with and they can process a bit of data and, and do whatever you like. Um, so there are basically three sort of broad types of webhooks. Pings, which um, tell the subscribing app, uh, uh, application that something has happened and then it's up to that application to do something. Um, uh, there are push, and we can actually push a kind of lump of data via the webhook, which the subscribing application might want to do something with. And then there are um, webhooks that process, so that you push your data to that um, application, and uh, it might do something with it. Uh, call further webhooks, return some data, because they can be two-way as well. Because effectively, because all they are is a HTTP post, they can also um, get data back from the uh, response from the other application. So you could push some data to it, say, I don't know, uh, uh, something which checks for spam or for robots filling in your form. So when something's published, you can push that data up, analyze it, and then the webhook um, can take that data back in, or perhaps it calls an API into your application. So they're, they're really, really flexible and powerful. And the, the important thing about webhooks is they are not hard to do. They're not hard to implement at all. Um, effectively, webhooks, because they're just HTTP host, they could be one line of code in a lot of applications. PHP, you could just raise a request and, and call it off to somewhere. The, um, you know, the, they really are something that can be implemented by anyone, really, really simply, in just a, a few um, lines of code. Um, and who, at the moment, uses webhooks? Well, there's tons, as I said before, there's tons of applications out there which are using webhooks. Um, and quite a lot of them you'll see, we've got Bitbucket, we've got GitHub, 
um, and uh, kiln there. So there's quite a lot of source control um, uh, applications which are using webhooks. And the reason for that is because it makes a really natural um, thing. So because you do something and you might want to know that someone has done something in a source control application. So let's say um, I check in some code uh, into kiln. I can set up a webhook which then pushes out to our um, uh, continuous integration server and tells it, uh, Tim's made a check-in, I need to do a new build, that sort of thing. So with webhooks you can kind of do um, whatever you like, because it's really down to the person who subscribes to the webhook to, to do something with that data. And that's why they're so easy to implement. They're easy to implement because you, as a webhook developer, all you have to do is develop something which pushes that data out, and then it's the responsibility of the consuming party, the subscriber, to do something with that data. Um, now, I know a, f a few of you here probably don't know much about webhooks, so I, rather than diving straight into the demo, because I've sort of rattled through that rather quickly, um, I, I'll, I'll ask for questions now, so if anyone's got any questions about what webhooks are, because I hopefully I've kind of got across what they do and what they are. Um, uh, so if anyone got any questions at this point? No? All good. Excellent. All... So what I've done is I've created a, a, a little implementation of webhooks from Braco. Uh, now Braco lends itself pretty well to uh, webhooks because of the rich event model that it has. So you can raise lots of events uh, and, and all I've done is I've created a way to easily push those out. Uh, so if I switch to my PC, oops, no. disadvantage of uh, this demo is that I'm having to do it all on one machine so you don't quite get the sense that um, all of this is happening or could be happening over the internet so these uh, two websites could be in completely different places they could be anywhere in the world so effectively what we have what I've created here is I've got two Umbraco instances these are individual websites, um, and one of them is the uh, publisher, and one of them is the subscriber. So here, Coldworks Webhooks is the publisher, and Hooky Hook is the subscriber. <laughs> so um, that's that. So the first one I'm going to show is the concept of just the simple ping. So it's just um, all I'm going to do is raise an event, uh, and Hooky Hook will uh, just register that something has happened. Uh, and in this case, I've um, hooked it into the, uh, the unpublished method. So here we are, we've got Umbraco, no, uh, Umbraco rocks. And when I unpublish that, I'm like, sure, yes. So nothing, is, nothing has happened here at all uh, on this one. But what it will have done is it's raised an event and uh, What, I've, what the event has done is it's just logged it in the um, log table of Umbraco of the uh, subscriber. So there we are. I have a webhook getting called. Not a very exciting because pings aren't, they don't do very much at all. All they are is something happened on one server and, uh, uh, and I, and I recognise recognize that that happened. So as we put, get onto slightly more interesting webhooks, um, we've got pushing data. Now, obviously, in Umbraco, we can hook into all sorts of different types of events, not just publishing of content, uh, although that's the most natural area. Umbraco, of course, has events around everything, and so we can, in fact, recognise when someone's editing a template. So here we have the normal template on here, and they're just the same, pretty much. <coughs> But again, I'm going to raise an event when I've made some additions to this um, template here. I'll save that. Oh, don't log me out. So 
So this is here we are on the original one. I've just saved it. Hello from the festival. But because I've raised a webhook, we'll see now that Hooky Hook has taken that as well. So effectively, all I've done there is I've subscribed to the um, uh, save template event pushed the data across to the other Umbraco instance and that saved it into, its, uh, into the same template as it found on the other one. So you can do quite interesting things just by pushing data. So what we have now is push notifications between two instances of Umbraco that a template has changed and that might be quite useful if you've got a, a scenario where you've kind of got load balanced servers or something like that and you just want to go save and tell all those servers, tell all those subscribing servers that that template has changed and take the latest version of the template from the, the publishing server. Um, but of course that's just Umbraco to Umbraco communication and that's kind of pretty easy, it's not, that's nothing uh, that uh, uh, interesting there. Uh, but what, of course, what you can do is you can go to um, any other application that can accept um, uh, HTTP post requests. So um, here, whoops, I start the right file. You can't see that on the wrong screen. Um, what I've got here is a little um, uh, sort of a HTTP listener that I've implemented. Um, so this is acting as our uh, other application. So this is just a HTTP listener that's listening on a specific um, port on my local host. But again, of course, this could be a, a server somewhere else in the world doing something. Um, and this one, again, is hooked into the events on Umbraco now using these um, uh, webhooks push notifications. So on this one, I have, if I can find my uh, pointer. So this time I've, I've plugged into the publish event. So when this publishes, it will send the notification over to the application that is running. And with that, nothing happened. Excellent. <laughs> Ah, because I'm on hooky hook. There we go. I'm on the wrong one. Easy to get confused. There we go. Right. So if I now go to the right one. And I invoke the publish event, which that one is subscribed to. Content item. The Braco Rocks has been published. <laughs> Unfortunately, the sounds do. Here we go, I'll turn it up a bit. Content item. Some Braco Rocks has been published. So effectively all that HTTP listener is doing there is it's just firing off a little bit of um, speech synthesis that, that, that tells you that something has been published. But you could do anything with that information. That's just a really kind of uh, quick example of pushing out to another application to do something with your, your bit of data. Um, but we can get considerably more complex than that. At the moment we're just pushing over quite simple things. Let's um, uh, imagine again, we've had a look at it with the template pushing some pretty simple data across. What if we could um, push a package across between two Umbraco instances? So in here I've Pre-set up a package called test, uh, and that's set to package up home page, text page, and the uh, home page template. So let's um, make a modification to the home page document type. Now in the generic properties, that probably still already exists, excellent. Oh, we've 
created the um, property type on there. And if we have a look at Hooky Hook, It's a bit like a magic trick. I have to keep showing you everything. Right? Look, it's not there at the moment. There's nothing. There's no um, test one in there. Obviously, test was already in there from where I did it earlier. There's no test one in there. Okay. If I save and publish this package I've raised the event saying that a package has been created and uh, told it to push the data over so that's actually packaged up that data sent it over to another Umbraco instance so now I'm remote updating doc types between two Umbraco instances um, just by using webhooks uh, now so that's that's pretty that's all relatively easy to um, implement because I'm hooking into the rich API that Umbraco already has. And that's why Umbraco is such a great candidate for webhooks because you can chain together quite complex and rich functionality just by using the Umbraco events. And we could have a scenario where we had multiple uh, Umbraco sites, one that pushed some data across, one that did some processing, raised another event, pushed it to another one. He can have some really quite complex chaining scenarios and that's really the power of webhooks is that they're so simple to do that they can, you can easily create quite rich chains of functionality um, all across the internet uh, between your web applications. Obviously this is just uh, kind of demo code so don't expect there to me to release courier via webhooks anytime soon so uh, but it's um but it's just an example really of, of being able to hook into Umbraco and being able to do some quite um, interesting things. So what I'll do now is I'll show you kind of um, how that all works. So we can get this Visual Studio onto the screen. Okay, so, so what, I've, what I've done is I've implemented, um, can I make that font bigger? easier to see. So, so the framework that, that, that I've created um, just allows you to um, create webhooks really easily for Umbraco just in a few lines of code um, and what you'll see here is we've got um, just a simple class which is the thing that um, uh, uh, sends out the, uh, the, the um, uh, notification, the push notification to the subscriber. And you see that I have here what we call an event binding attri attribute which um, allows us to tell it which um, event that you want this to fire on. So this bit of code will now be fired whenever you um, uh, call uh, the after unpublished because this is the this is the ping one I showed you very first off. Um, and it's pretty simple. All it does, oh, it has a, a GUID, so the system knows which one it is. Um, and all it does is it just grabs a collection of data. It's exactly the same as if you were programming against the application base, uh, not application base, the application, whatever it's called, um, in Umbraco, where you register your events normally for Umbraco. Um, uh, and, uh, and it just allows you to, to work in exactly the same way. You can get out the, um, the sender, which is effectively the, um, uh, the document uh, that raised the unpublished request, uh, and you can pull values out of that. So say name, ID, URL, so you can push, you can tell tell it which data you want to push over um, uh, because you don't want to just sometimes you may not want to push absolutely everything sometimes you may just want to push a couple of different fields so this way you can um, uh, configure it exactly how you want I just want to send the name the ID or the URL of the document that has been un unpublished uh, and then we just tell it that we want to execute the webhook. Now, these, this, the webhook system that, I, uh, that I've plugged in here, it's all threaded. So you'll notice when I was publishing, there was no real delay um, on, on what I was doing because that can be a concern sometimes with webhooks. What happens if I had a thousand subscribers and it had to go and send a thousand um, HTTP posts 
whilst it was doing the unpublished or the published, well, we might have a blocking scenario there that it would take a long time to get through. So, so what I've got here is I've got something that just spins off another thread, does the, um, uh, does the webhook sending, and, um, and then comes back into uh, uh, a bracket when it's done. And, uh, oh, let's see, I'm this a bit smaller. Oh, <laughs> the right one. Oh. There we go. I'm not entirely sure my uh, Windows machine understands my uh, multi-gesture trackpad. <laughs> it's a little bit smaller. Now at the moment this is um, a Getting towards being ready for prime time, being released as a package, there's still a little bit of work that needs to be done in places um, to tidy things up, but um, it's getting close. And, uh, and what, I've, what we've got here is all the different types uh, that I've just been talking about, all the different types of um, events that I've been subscribing to. So we've got new document, publish package, save document type, save template. Um, and if we have a look at the um, publish package, because that's the one that's doing something slightly more interesting, Again, same, same principle, but all I'm doing is I'm just um, uh, grabbing out the, the contents of the, um, the zip file that gets written when you publish a package and uh, sending that up over a post request. Uh, so, the, uh, uh, so the subscriber can do something with that data. In this case, it just installs the package on the other Umbraco instance. Actually, if I show you also in the back end, I probably should have showed you this earlier on. And this is one of the bits that needs a little bit of polishing. This is what you can see in Umbraco, if I go to the right one, which I'm not in Hooky Hook. Developer. Um, so this is the one, so the system knows which ones have been, um, uh, uh, which events have been hooked into, uh, and it just tells us um, that we have, these are the, um, web hooks that have been uh, uh, set up and it tells us what, what, the, the, subscri what the subscribers for that particular um, web hook are. So um, uh, this is the bit that needs to be polished uh, a bit because uh, at, that, at the moment it's um, a bit unwieldy because it will be a great big long list so we just need to turn that into a thing so you can have a look at the individual subscribers. Now one of the interesting things that this will also do is um, another concern with web hooks is what happens if um, lots of people uh, register webhooks and um, their servers aren't there. You know, it, it could keep failing. Um, so what this has got is a system in it whereby it will try well, an arbitrary number, it's set at five at the moment, but um, that will be configurable, um, say five or ten times. And if it gets ten fails back, then it will um, just delete that subscriber from the list. So it won't keep trying to do it forever. So it will all kind of manage the, some of the subscription aspects for you so you don't have to worry too much about um, uh, a lot of the infrastructure like the threading. It just takes away some of the worries that sometimes people have with webhooks. Um, and that's it. That's a bit of a kind of a, a whistle-stop tour of webhooks. I, I guess you probably maybe have some questions about um, what webhooks are for and what they can be used for. So um, I'm happy to take some questions. Yes, this one. How do you wire the two together? Which one is which? What, what do you mean? Um, <coughs> for example, with, with the publisher, with publishing, how do we get it to the subscriber? Do you have the URL? Do you set that somewhere? Uh, yes. Um, uh, 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 Yes, at the moment there's no, um, well there is, uh, via, uh, I have a base um, web service that allows you to um, uh, set up new subscribers and you just pass in the GUID and the endpoint that you want the, um, the, the webhook to fire to. Um, however, there is a, uh, if anyone can uh, spot the, uh, the problem I might have with that, is obviously web, um, the endpoints are going to have slashes in, when I was implementing it in base I didn't think it through and of course um, base interprets the slashes as 
other parameters. Uh, so I, I'm just going to convert that to a proper web service. And the reason I'm going to do it in web services is because um, in that way we can have almost automatic subscription to webhooks. So when um, this application starts up, it can say, I would like to subscribe to these webhooks. And when it shuts down, it can delete itself. It can delete the webhooks that it's subscribed to. So you could almost have sort of um, a, a system where it can come up, listen for push notifications, and then when it doesn't want to listen to them anymore, it can go back down again and, and turn those off. So yeah, so at the moment there's just um, this will be uh, this is a, well will be a database table but for the purposes of demo. I've done it in a uh, XML file because I can. Tell the repository which provider to use, which is using the XML one at the moment. Um, and you see here we have a webhook ID. Uh, this is the ID of the subscriber, so the subscriber gets sent that back when it subscribes. Um, it gets sent back a GUID, and so it can send it back again and say, I want that, I want this particular subscriber deleted now. Um, and there we are, the endpoint is that's, that's where the webhook. Um, get sent to. That's where the, the subscriber endpoint is. Um, uh, that's the fail count. So, as I say, that's the number that it'll just count the fails that it has. Um, it can, that can either be ignored, you can just keep letting them fail forever, or um, we can set that number to tell it to stop trying after five. And, um, uh, and it will be um, uh, uh, hooked into the um, uh, member system with an umbrella as well, so you can restrict um, uh, your your subscribers and webhooks by um, uh, only people who are registered with the site um, and that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's how you hook it up. Any more? Oh yeah, it's gone. The, um, you know, the you're doing here. Yeah. When you release it, will you release that as an example? That's right. Yeah, I'll release everything that everything is here. Basically, I'll even release the um, the little HTTP listener, so you can use that to test your sort of webhooks, see what comes over, and and um, and fiddle about with it, and do what you like, really. Any more questions? We're all comfortable with webhooks. We know what they do, and cool. Oh yes, go on, Alex. Have you, um, have you looked into leaving the connection open? Uh, having uh, what, having it as a um, uh, whatever it's called? Uh, yeah. So that uh, you could keep sending data over yeah, exactly. it. Yeah, theoretically, I'm I, not not in this implementation, but I don't think it would be terribly hard to do that, to be honest. Um, I said not really knowing how I've looked at it. So. <laughs> I know the old developer answer can't be that hard. <laughs> he says after three months of coding all night. <laughs> um, yeah, so any more? I mean, presumably it's the same restrictions about the size of HTTP post. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, so it's um, the thing is with, with webhooks, they're not a standard or anything like that. They're just uh, a, a kind of a pattern, a way of doing things um, that a, a few people now are beginning to sort of get behind and say this is this is the thing. Well, hence the logo. <laughs> so someone's done a logo for it, so it's uh, it's official now. Um, Any more? No. Cool. Okay. Um, well, yeah, as I say, th this will be released as soon as I've just done a little bit of polishing on, on some of the UI stuff, that sort of thing. Um, and um, I'll release the source as well so you can play around with it and extend it if you want to, Alex. <laughs> um, uh, and make it into whatever you like. Um, but webhooks are, are, are really powerful and um, they're, they're really something that um, I think a, a lot of sites could, could benefit from. And the more people who implement webhooks in their web applications, the more of these chains of functionality that will be available on the web uh, and the more we'll be able to do. So that's that really. Okay, I've rattled through quite quickly. I was expecting more questions.